What a thing, guy. Eh? Must be now, oh God. How many years? But 35 years ago, 34 years ago, kid I used to hang around with, he had a copy of Playboy. And this copy of Playboy he had was, I think, he, you know, he'd gone to Great Lens to get hold of it, and it was like the Pamela Anderson debut uh, Playboy. And if you look at it, it's kind of soft core, but it's a matter of, wow. And like, I saw, first saw pictures of Pamela Anderson with a tits out when I was about 13 or 14. Playboy, it's like, oh, wow. And then you weigh up. How, the, how she was like portrayed back then, even back then, as she was a very wholesome sort of small town girl. Who'd been discovered by a real random chance as a model and then obviously, you know, Hugh Hefner saw whatever the photos of her around and next thing you know, she's, she's in the world of Hollywood. She's a, a friend of the Playboy organisation. Now, you get yourself a start like that in L.A., and you're going to go places real quick, especially when you look like she did. But it's like the person was... She was actually just a good-looking working-class girl. I mean, I know, I know, I've know, i known plenty of good-looking working-class girls. End up working in supermarkets. Well, she was a waitress who ended up being spotted. It's like whose eyes are on you would depend on how far you go. And it's like, um, <clears throat> when she got married to Tommy Lee, it's like, oh, she got married to Tommy Lee. Everyone knows who Tommy Lee is, or especially, I mean, I certainly knew. I used to quite like the Motley Crew. First Motley Crew album I had was Girls, 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 again, when I was about 13 or 14. I like Motley Crew to this day. I'm like, no, I'm still to this day. It's like nobody actually sounds quite like the Motley Crew. Nobody sounds like them. And it's like what they were trying to do is like, they were like the end stage product of what was glam rock. They were like the masters of that kind of, um, what came out of the 70s. When, when rock came sort of hyper commercial, and then suddenly it's, it, it's mainstream music. Uh, when that when that period died off, it's like that's when they came in, like early eighties, and it's like this was almost this was like glam rock in its final form. Now it's like the Motley Crue are fun, they're, they're good, they're catchy. It's like Motley Crue tunes are great. It's like they're they're a great band. And it's like, oh, her metal. And it's like, no, these guys were really good and everyone was her metal at the time. So Tommy Lee, you know who he is. And it's like, well, he's, uh, he's one of the best rock drummers in the world. He's known for being a bit of a drunk and a dickhead. But, you know, fair play to him. He has, like, sold 70,000, 80,000 albums, a million albums. It's like if you were to look at dysfunction in that group of people who were in, it's like they were just working class guys, the Motley Crew. Not much, not far out of the teens. They were like a teenage band when they were like big. So you look at where, where they're, they're talking about where they're from. It's like, where are they from? The shittest parts of LA. It's like they're working class guys who've never had to grow up. So it's like, yeah, Tommy Lee, fine, okay. And then as the next thing you know, that tape became a thing. And it's like that tape on video, right? When it became out, it got as far as Taylor Engineering and Plastics in Rochdale and the Cronky Saw Shaw Social Club. Like what? It's like, yeah, that stolen tape in the old method, before there was the internet to share something that go viral, that went viral, people copying it. And it's like, they've to this day, it's like, if they really knew how far that tape had gone, they would still probably be stunned to this day. It's like, you know, a woman I used to work with lent it me and said, you really ought to watch that. That is a fucking eye opener. And she's like, oh, 
and the, the, her, her observations about it were a little bit crude. So it's like, I saw borrowed it, I took it home and watched it. And it's like, this is the thing with that Tom, Pam and Tommy TV show. How many people watching that have seen that video? It's like, I've seen it. I've seen it once and I wouldn't watch it again. It's not like I was rushing, oh, I need to copy this to keep it. For like masturbatory purposes. So no, it's not like that, that video at all. It's not hot, but it is. It's not sexy, but it is. And it's like, you put that on. You watch it and you're like, hang on a minute, I shouldn't be watching this. And that's part of why it's good. That's part of why everyone was glued to it. That's why someone gave it to me. So you watch that, it's an eye opener. It's like a video nasty. You know, if, if someone give you a snuff video and say, hey, someone gets killed in this video, watch it. It's like, that's a fucking eye opener. It's, it's, it's on the verge of that, that sex tape. And you know why? Because you know what you come away from that sex tape with? right when you watch it is that he really loved her and she really loved him and that's how it comes across as weird it's like this is an abomination this he fucked up making this and i'm like personally i'm like never make pawn yourself of yourself never take selfies never take dick pics never take pawn because i've seen it right what happens when it gets around and it's like that was <clears throat> to be, to have watched that show and been someone who saw it you know, in my 20s when i saw it but it's like no that was wrong that that happened it was wrong it was an abomination that tape should never have existed and them those who made the tape pam and tommy they kind of knew that they were fooling around and to them it was kind of funny. And what did they do with it when they got it? Instead of destroying it like they should have done, he foolishly put it in his fucking safe. Now the problem with his safe was, it wasn't like usually when you get a safe installed, you, you get it like bolted to the floor and like concrete underneath it. So I well, yeah, the, 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 the bolts are inside the safe and it's it's set in concrete. So you have to get in it to shift it. So you have to break the safe where it is. That's the idea of a safe, but he didn't wasn't that smart. So he just had a state-of-the-art fucking safe. Just sat there. So when he's ripped off someone who is, he's, 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 he's basically treated someone very badly as it dramatizes in that show. And to get revenge, this guy stole his tape, uh, stole his safe and stumbled across this tape. Now, there's a thing about that show as to where it starts off and you kind of feel kind of, it tries to make you be on side or feel sorry for this guy who was ripped off by Tommy Lee. But then it, 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 it flips and it's like, hang on a minute. No matter what twat he was to that guy, he didn't deserve what that guy did to him. And his wife certainly didn't deserve that. It's like no one deserves to go through what Pamela Anderson went through when that tape got out. No one. It's just flat wrong what happened to her over that because it ended her career as being someone who was serious and she was serious about her career and what in the future she was serious about her relationship with that guy and that's the thing with him people said Tommy Lee's dickhead uh, drunk party animal idiot but the same people would say he's the kindest sweetest man in the world and it's like well he's a He's a fucked up person. He's a narcissist. Yeah, granted. Many are. You wouldn't have got as far in life if you weren't. In that scene that he's in, the music scene. So it's like, this builder who's doing all this work for him, who he's messing about, and then when he's when this guy throws down, he says, you're going to pay us for any of this work? And he decides to get funny with him and says, tell you what, it's like, if you don't like it, fuck off. I mean, right, okay, he treated that guy very badly, but it's a matter of, this guy, it's like, what kind of builder in the world lets somebody run up a bill like that and doesn't? Just down tools on him. 
I'm, there's something I do know is tradesmen. It's unfashionable now to be a tradesman, but once upon a time, everybody was one. And I've known tradesmen who haven't been paid. And the sort of things that tradesmen do who don't get paid, who get ripped off, is like they'll turn up in the dead of night and take down all the work they've done. I've known guys who've done it. They've turned up and they've neatly, like demolished, demolished an extension or a wall they've built and just left it with the bricks just piled up as to say, right, if you don't pay us, we'll just take it all down. Well, it's like these these guys who found themselves, this guy found himself ripped off by Tommy Lee because he, he basically had been too weak. He, he didn't know who he was dealing with. He was a fucking idiot. And it's like, builders don't let normal people, builders are generally straight, straight up people who will tell you, I want fucking pay. I want paying up front. I want my expenses paying for me. You don't open an account with me. I open an account with you. You pay me, right? And this guy was too weak, right? To actually be able to deal with Tommy Lee. Too weak. Whereas, you know, proper builders would be like with him. Look, mate, you pay us. All the work doesn't get done. And by the time we've told everyone what a cunt you are to work for, you'll, you don't, I don't care how much you're going to pay. No one's going to want to work for you because you mess people about. So it's like you either pay me or your house remains a building site forever because no one's ever going to, no one's going to work for you. No one's going to follow this job. And he was too weak. So he ends up getting fucked over because he doesn't, he doesn't know that he's dealing with a pussy. Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee, in, in, his, in his ways, how he handles himself, a loser, a, a dickhead. So it's like, um, did you not see that he's got like full body tattoos and fucking piercings all over the place and he's usually fucking high on something or drunk and spends most of his time just, just goofing off with his buddies. It's like, you realise that this is not a very serious person you're dealing with, so you have to get serious with him and say, look, because it's a matter of that, it's like Tommy Lee and the Motley Crew. it's like they're dicks. It's like, how did they manage to get so far in the music business? Because when push comes to shove, they do what they're fucking told. They were well, they were well managed, they were, and they were looked after, they were babysitted, weren't they? Their entire careers, they were babysitted by people who knew better. And it's like, it's numbskull. Goes working for Tommy Lee, Let's Tommy Lee bully him when anyone who'd know the guy's like, he's the most irresponsible fucking person in the world. What you don't do is give him any kind of control or authority over you because he's a fucking idiot. So like I've known many a musician, none not famous as him, but you don't let them be in charge of anything. They, 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 they're, they're generally idiots. They're complete idiots. So it's like, one thing you know is that being a musician and being an idiot can go hand in hand. So it's like, you don't let them have any authority. And if they start to demand authority, once they get in charge, they don't know what to do. They just like the idea of being in charge. They don't understand responsibility. So it's like, this numbskull works for... Because working for Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee fucks him over and fires him. So what does he do as a measure of revenge? He robs his safe. What does he find in his safe? Cash, jewellery, guns, and a videotape. What does he do with the tape? Takes it to somebody who knows in the porn industry because that's his previous career. Oh! Oh, so it's like he's a scumbag builder. It's like he's a, a person who can't... There's a lot of things about the building trade that you may not know. It's refuge for criminals and people with terrible pasts. It's like one place you can get away with being anything is a building site. So it's like if you wanna if you wanna know get to talk to or meet people who've been to prison, even people once upon a time, people who were on the fucking run, living under a false assumed identity, where would they be working? Building site. The construction industry is a refuge for criminals, much like being an Uber driver is. So this guy robs his safe, steals his tape, 
finds himself someone who could play the tape and then decides, hey, I'm going to try and make some money out of this by way of getting my revenge because all, all told he owes me like 27 grand. And it's like, how have you got, have you, how, how have you been so weak as to where you've let a fucking little pipsqueak of a fucking bully, a fucking drummer boy, owe you 27 fucking grand? And it's because you're so weak you couldn't say, hey, hang on a minute, games and over the fucking money. Because he was so weak he had to go and take that kind of revenge on them. And it's like, that tape stolen from that safe was copied millions of times uh, to where I get word when I'm in the Cronkyshaw Social Club from the lad behind the bar who's always, always had that kind of thing going on where there were tapes left behind the bar. The, the trick was the tape, would uh, the, the box would be something like a course fishing or else some movie you're never going to fucking watch. And then that would be the cover for the tape inside being porn. So it's like, oh, yeah, someone's left you a video. And it'd be, um, I don't know, the, like the, the best of Only Fools and Horses or something like that. And then it's actually just a cover. So it's like, once upon a time, video cassettes used to get handed over in boxes like Sleepless in Seattle, You've Got Mail, Pretty Woman, things that people will not fucking watch of their own volition, right? And it's like, oh, just that. So innocuously hidden amongst that, much like the joke out of train spotting where he steals the guy's homemade pawn tape. At least that guy dying, doesn't it, in train spotting where he's, um, he kills himself in the end because his homemade pawn tape went missing. How did his mate steal that tape, that homemade pawn tape? Well, he did a switcheroo that, to, to make it so it was 101 great goals. So it's, that's, the, that's actually the, the, the pawn tape trick the box that says 101 great great goals and the black videotape. That videotape got as far as Cronkyshaw Social Club in Rochdale, whereas the lad behind the bar who's always trading videotapes, pawn. Oh, I've got the uh, Pamela Anderson Tommy Lee tape. Do you want to watch it? No, I've seen it. No, thanks. No, thanks. I don't want to watch it. Oh, fair enough. Oh, I've seen it. Any good? Well, kind of, yeah. It's like, uh, as homemade palm tapes go, it's like one of the best ever. What? It's like, oh, yeah, full trip. It's like, this is like X-rated filth. But it's like, what two people do within their own relationship is between them. And that tape is deeply personal. It's like, I shouldn't be watching this. And everybody who's seen it will have had that ick go through them and say, I shouldn't be watching this. But in some people, that's what made it so alluring. In fact, the idea of it existing, oh, I want to watch that. And then you see it and it's like, oh, that's terrible. Terrible? Yeah, that's terrible. That's a tragedy, that. But it's kind of hot, isn't it? And explicit and sexy. So yeah, but it's terrible. It's heartbreaking. What? Yeah, it's heartbreaking. Is it? Yeah. What do you mean? Just watch it. It's everywhere. Watch it. And you'll see that it's it's a tragedy. It's devastating. It's, it's a blow that someone's never going to recover from. Because they... It was never supposed to see the light of day and did. And it's like, that's why you should never make porn on your own. You should never make your own porn tapes, ever. Like, why? So it's because you... It, it, everyone who watches it be damaged by it. Everyone who watches it be hurt, you know, and have, have weird mixed feelings about it. So when I've been watching that series, I'm up to the last episode of it, and I'm like... In a strange old way, because of the nature of the material. It's like, I'm a party to this. It's like, why? It's like, well, I've seen it. No one forced me to watch it either. I, it was, it, I was curious enough to watch it. And I watched it, and I'm like, this is actually really sweet. What? Yeah. He loves her. 
She loves him. These are a cute couple. These are two people who are to be together. They really, really love each other. And one day they probably had a few too many to drink and he bought himself a new cam collar and they had it switched on practically all day. And it's so... It's sad. And you bought the thing is, you know, the TV show they've made that tells the story from the, the, the position of Tommy and Pam and the guy who stole the tape is actually a story... That's a tape worth making. It's a story really worth telling. And it's like, what what's the... Um, What's the TV show like? And it's like, well, it's kind of like life. What? So, yeah, uh, some people are absolute cunts. But they're not absolute cunts all the time. And here, yeah, people do some fuck things to people, but they don't necessarily fuck everyone over. And amongst them, all this namaste, bullshit, new age, meditation and... Power of attraction nonsense. Notions of karma. Notions of, I'm going to get revenge on these people. And it'd be a matter of, what did that Pamela Anderson do to deserve that? And the answer is, absolutely nothing at all. I'm like, in watching that, actually quite moved by it. Because I've seen it. And I'm like, this is like so wrong. And it being so wrong, I guarantee that millions of people saw it. It's like, to this day, do they realise that the, the, the sex tape got as far as the Cronkershire Social Club in Rochdale? Before the internet came along, when it was all just, hey, I've got two video recorders. Have you now? Yes. And the, the, it just being duplicated by people just making their own personal copies of it and then lending it out and then them making copies of it and then making copies of it and then making copies of it. It's like it got as far as everyone who knew people in social situations, uh, it would have been something that came up in conversation and then it'd be a matter of, yeah, I've seen it. Really? You Well, yeah, I've got it. What? Can I watch it? Do you really want it? Well, yeah, it'd be when people hear about it, they're like, I want to watch it, I want to watch it, I want to watch it, I want to watch it. Like, do you want to watch it? There's um, a chap, Steve, when I mentioned I mentioned on Facebook, I'd seen it, and it's like, I'd seen the, the, the TV show, and he says, is there a recreation of the tape? And I'm like, you don't want to watch the tape. It'll fuck you up. It'll... It'll demonstrate to you how fragile people's sort of lives can be. It does. It's, it's, it's like, it's a weird study into humanity that the Pam and Tommy sex tape. It's like, watch porn, right? You watch porn, it's like, well, she likely got paid, uh, depending on, depending on what, what goes on and who you're shooting with. It's like, for that morning's work, that woman in that, right? She'll have probably got paid a couple of grand, a good couple of grand, and being it flat out for the wages, she can work one day a week instead of for the same money as working a fortnight. She can work one day a week for a fortnight's wages. And she might work three days that week and she's got money. But she turns up on the day, on the pawn shoe, contracted to get fucked contracted she there to do it with intention I'm here to do this and we have part when you get it someone who isn't a whore it's not part is it so there's, there's always that detachment as to where you can logically as to put it as to where it's like well People are free to do what they want. It's like you can speculate as to how fucked that person's life might have been, right? 
to have ended up in that situation where they ended up doing Palm and it'd be okay you can probably surmise that she's a, a, a victim of abuse but still alive not beyond control and make a conscious decision that that's what they want to do it's like um do you want to work in as a story of a, a famous palm star do you want to work in blockbuster video all your life uh, another palm star i can think of do you want to be a waitress and be uneducated numbers of piss on Never going to be anything but a waitress. Or do you want to be somebody who can potentially, if you stick at it and you don't, and things don't get out of control, you can potentially make millions of dollars. So to some, it's a lifestyle choice. To some, it's something that they consciously do as to say, this is my path. It's not a great path. And it's like, things have gone wrong for you to be that but there's some that'll make the consideration well i work at asda on minimum wage and if i do this i can leave this behind and i quite enjoy sex make a conscious decision to do it you will never see anyone who's in a porn movie who's not willing to be in a porn movie there's nothing quite as unsexy as someone who's reluctant to be in a porn movie, is there? Nothing quite as unsexy as that. But it's like, you change it over, you flip it to the celebrity sex tape that's been leaked. And you're like, she ain't a whore. He loves her. This is a tragedy. And you, you, and in, and in, in watching it, you've, you've taken part in it, and it's gone in here. I've seen that tape, and I'll never forget it. That I love you, baby. And it's like, well, yeah, he probably does. It's so intimate, and so almost pure. That it's a real eye opener. I recommend anyone out there if you're curious about that. If there's any justice in the world, that te that video has disappeared from history. Because it's it's an abomination. It's so sad. And if you see how the, the the lives turned out of those two involved, it's like they didn't benefit in any shape or form from that getting out around the world. You know, like there's those in the world who've deliberately leaked sex tapes in order to gain notoriety, fame, publicity. Well, that ain't that. It's a tremendously good TV show, that Pam and Tommy, because it's so real. And a, a, an incredible story worth telling. Because, say, in the first instance, you might feel sorry for the carpenter who's getting fucked over. But then it, it kind of flips. And it's like, she may have taken her clothes off a playboy. She may have spent every day of the week in a bathing suit shooting Baywatch. But she didn't sign up for that. People might have been thinking, oh, she's a sex symbol, therefore, you know, she's a whore, she's a slut, she's a slag. And it'd be a matter of, I don't think she was. And I, I don't think she is. I think Pamela Anderson's likely quite an articulate and intelligent person. I dare say of uh, women who are tough, who've been through shit and seen some real disaster. It's like, she could potentially be one of the most um, profound and wise women in the world, Pamela Anderson, in view of what she's experienced. So I might follow her on Twitter. <laughs> um, I put it. I put it in her favour, Pamela Anderson, one of the very few celebrities who's actually taken up for that Julian Assange to try and get him out of jail. Not so many have. She did. <laughs>